Welcome to our second um, Bible study lesson, The World's Only Hope. Never has the world faced so many overwhelming problems that seem to have no solution. The news media reveals a host of difficulties that men is incapable of solving. The world has tried in vain to resolve these difficulties through the UN. Many of the major world problems have not been solved or settled. The moral decay of mankind is apparent wherever one looks. The confusion and perplexity in solving these social problems can be seen on every side. Many are asking, where can we find a permanent solution to these problems? Your Bible holds the answer. Christ foretold the event that will resolve all the problems of mankind. There is no other such solution in the closing days of his ministry on this earth, 2,000 years ago, Jesus talked about the day when he would be taken and crucified. The disciples of Christ would not allow themselves to believe that such a fate could ever happen to their beloved leader. Christ knew that they would need an abiding hope in the days to come. He gave them the wonderful promise we find recorded in John 14. 1 to 3. And in John 14, 1 to 3, this is what he says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, or believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that wherever I am, you may also be. The fulfilment of his promise and the coming of our Lord the second time to this earth is man's only hope in his search to solve the problems of humanity. Let's see what the word of God teaches concerning this wonderful event. Question one, what does Paul call the second coming of Christ? And when we look in Titus 2, 13, it says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. What a beautiful Bible text that is, and a promise as well, because it's, 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 it's a promise that God has told us that he is coming back. And, you know, the way that the world is, is going today, we need that hope. We, we need something to believe in. All we have to do is just step outside, look on the news, look what's going on in our schools look what's going on in in our in our hospitals you know bus strikes here um ev everything that's going on and it, it's like the world has gone mad it's like it's gone mad but god has told us and he has given us that blessed hope and that is this, uh, the return of jesus christ question two it says what certain promises did christ give concerning his return and then that is in john 14 and that is one to three and it says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. How wonderful is that? And God tells us to not let our hearts be troubled. And, you know, sometimes we do get troubled with all the things that we see. Sometimes I say, oh, Lord, you know, please hurry up and come. Take us out of this world. You know, there's times I just want to go home. But we can't just yet because there still is a work for us to do. And he says, believe also in me. And we must believe. We have to believe. That's one thing we have to do is have that belief that what Jesus said and what he taught us was the truth. And he talks about there are many houses in his father's mansion. And I hope there's a house there for me as well. 
So, you know, we've got that hope. We've got, he's telling us not us to be, not telling us not to be troubled. And he's telling us to believe also in him because he says now that he was going to prepare a place for us and that he will come again soon. Question three. When people talk about the second coming of our Lord being a secret, what should we do? And in Matthew 24, 23 to 26. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall see great signs and wonders, insomuch that if we were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Now, there's many, many um, films about um, the secret rapture, that, um, you know, people are going to be secretly raptured away. And I, I watched a film, it had Nicolas Cage in it, and um, there was a plane in the air, and obviously the pilot must have been a, a, a Christian who was flying the plane, and then he was secretly raptured away. And um, I, I, I just don't believe that, that's, for me, that's confusion, and people were driving their cars, and one was raptured away, and there was a crash, and then the next thing, the plane came crashing down. God, God doesn't do things in secret. When, he's, when he comes, every eye will see him. All of us will see him. And we're going to have like false prophets who are going to be, be, think that they are Jesus. And people, your own friends, and even Christians will go and say, come on, let's go and see, let's go and see. But God tells us not to go. Because if we know the word of God, and if we know what God says, how he's going to come, then we will know that this is not of God. So let's move on to question four. To what did Jesus compare the glory of his coming? And in Matthew 24, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, it's, it's telling us it's, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's not a silent. It's not going to be silent. It says, has the lightning come? So you're going to see the light. You're going to see the sky shine up. The sky is going to be bright. It's going to be, it's going to be, you know, the lightning that we see today, it's, it's going to be nothing like what we see when, when it happens. You know, the whole sky, everything is going to be lit up, lit up. You know, the people, when, when, when the lightning strikes, the children hide under the, the sheets. The adults are going to be hiding under the bed. So it, it, it makes it clear, it's, it's not going to be a quiet thing and it's not going to be um, a silent thing. The, the, the lightning is going gonna, gonna to be lit up from all over. You're going to see, see him and then you're going to see him in his glory coming. You're going to see him. So every eye will see him. It's going to be a scary time for some, but a glorious time for others. And question five, what did Christ say? all the um, tribes of the earth would do at his coming. So this is Matthew 24, 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth moan, and they shall see the Son of Man. Everyone, everyone who is alive at that time, whether they are um, for Christ or whether they're part of the Antichrist, everyone, are going to see him. They're going to see him in his glory. And it says that all tribes moan. They all cried. Everybody cried out. Everybody everybody knew who he was. He knew all those people who have said, yeah, 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 that believing God, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They're all going to see him. Every single one of them will see him. You know, we go out and we tell people about Jesus. All those people that, that may, may might have flashbacks when um, David was giving them out tracks and they just, no. No, don't want it. Don't want to know. You know, all of them people, it might even, like I said, a flashback to when they said no. And it, and it wouldn't have been just one occasion. It would have been on the many occasions that they said no. Many occasions they had the opportunity to know Christ and they shunned him. You know, so all of that is, is, is going to take place. You know, so but I just pray that God will give us the strength to keep standing. And on that day that we will be happy. We, we, we will be happy because we will know who he is. Um, one of the things that I want to mention is that when we see Christ coming and um, 
from afar, it's, it's like half the size of a man's hand and it will be a, a black dot in the sky, a black dot. And we, we, people will see that dot. And as it comes closer and closer, it will get lighter and lighter and brighter and brighter as it comes closer. And it, to the point where you'll see that it's Christ. You'll see him in all his glory. You'll see him with all his angels. You'll see him on his horse coming. He's coming to, cl to claim his victory, coming to claim his children. So always remember that. That is how Jesus is going to come. He's, he's, not, he's not going to be already here. Yeah, he's going to come starting with that. It's the size, half the size of a man's um, um, hand, this black dot. And then it will get brighter and brighter. And, and us who know him, we, we will be smiling because we will know who he is. And for those, oh, what a, what a terrible, terrible time it will be because they didn't believe in him. They didn't take the time to say, okay, tell me about this Jesus. Try and convince me about this Jesus. So for, for us, it's going to be a glorious time. And for them, it's going to be a very, very sad time. We just need to keep praying for them, praying for our, our children and our families who have not yet um, given their hearts to Christ or who have left him and have not come home yet. So we go on to question six. And in question six, it says, according to the book of Revelation, how many will be able to see Christ's return? And in Revelation 1.7, behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also who pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now, on that cloud, when they see him on the cloud, because obviously he cannot um, touch, his feet cannot touch the earth, because it is still sin, still full of sin, before Jesus destroys it. Um, so when, when, when they see him, every eye, it says, every eye, yeah, every eye, even them that pierced him. Now we're going back. You take yourself way back to those who took that nail and drove it into our Saviour's hand and drove it into his feet. All them wicked people, yeah, they all will see him in his glory, in his glory. And, you know, even, while I'm, even when I'm talking about this, I get excited because these are the things that we tell people about how he's going to come. And we get mocked. We get mocked because of they, they call it a fairy tale. They're going to see this fairy tale. This is one fairy tale that's going to come true. This is one that's going to come true. And they're going to see every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him. And he says, Amen. So I'm looking forward to that day. I am looking forward to that day. So let's go on to question um, seven. What did the angel say concerning the return of Christ? And this is in Acts. Um, 1, 9 to 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfast towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white aprils, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, ye shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And there you go. That, 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 that says it all for me because the same way you see him go up is the same way you see him come down. This is what the angels have said. So we know as Christians, and even when we tell the world out there, this is how he's going to come. They too will know as well. But the deception that is going to be happened, it says that it could deceive even the very elect. And do you know why that why that the Bible says that? It's because that if we don't know the word of God, we will be deceived. And that is why it's important every day, even if it's two or three scriptures to know them. Because Jesus says that when the time comes, that his father will bring everything that we have read back into remembrance so even all of this that i'm reading and because i would have probably forgot it by the end of tonight 
that God is going to bring it all back into remembrance so that when we have to stand and when we have to go out and preach the gospel, when the latter rain falls on us, all of these things that we have been talking about, all these Bible studies that have been put together, and when you study them, everything will be brought back to memory so that when you go out there to witness, to tell people about the second coming of Christ, you will not be able to say, like, I don't know where to look for it. I don't know what to do. I haven't got my Bible because when the Holy Spirit brings it back to you, you'll know exactly what to say. And that is that that's going to be a glorious day. You know, the disciples got to witness that. They got to see that. And the Bible says, you know, blessed are us who have not seen him, but believe in him. And, and for me, that is one of the things when, when I go out witnessing is what I would tell people. And this is a good text now. I can use this text and say, this is what God said. And this is what he said about us who didn't see him. Because the same way he went is the same way he's coming back. So we're going to have a break there and we will continue um, the world's only hope, the Bible speaks, next time. Okay.